Lacey, what's your sign? Science. Get out of my video, Trace. Hey everyone, Lacey Green here for D News. Astrology is based on the premise that celestial bodies like the sun, the moon, planets, and constellations have an effect on what happens on Earth. Who you are as a person, how people behave, and it's all based on when they were born. So this is not to be confused with astronomy, which is a study of those celestial bodies themselves, their properties and placement and things like that. Now, I have a lot of friends, and my adorable little sister particularly, who are really into astrology. It's how they start their day, and the foundation for their relationships with other people. It's the foundation of their understanding of themselves. And as much as I love them, the scientist within me is cringing. Nah, man, nah. Why does astrology make scientists cringe? I mean, it seems scientific enough, what with all the tracking of the planetary movements and star charts and complicated formulas. But astrology isn't an actual science because one, it's not based on evidence. Two, the conclusions aren't testable. Three, it isn't open to review by other scientists. And my favorite, number four, it's unfalsifiable. Astrology can't be proven wrong, and that's the heart of what science is. The assertions of astrology are so general and open to interpretation that we can always find a way to see it in a factual light. We saw this effect in James Randi's famous astrology test. Participants were given specific horoscopes based on when and where they were born. After reading, they all rated their horoscope as very or extremely accurate. Then they were passed their neighbor's horoscope and learned that they all had the same exact one. Other scientists have also looked at astrology's claims about careers. The idea is that being born under Mars, a supposedly warlike planet, produces more soldiers and athletes, whereas Venus produces more artistic types. In a study of 25,000 Frenchmen in the 60s, a French psychologist found no correlations. He also did a study where he mixed up the birth charts of 10 murderers with 10 citizens and invited astrologers to identify which was which based on the charts. They failed miserably. A similar but larger study was published in 2007 and they found that the astrologers were even more wrong than random chance. Ouch! Yet another study at the University of Manchester in 2001 looked at love compatibility by astrological sign to see, you know, if there were any trends. They had the data of 10 million couples from the census of Britain and Wales and they found not a single sign pairing that showed a greater or lesser chance of romantic success. Now, there's also the fact that the sun is no longer in a given zodiac constellation during its designated time anymore. Although the sun is supposed to be in Aries right now, that's based on an outdated model. It's actually in Pisces until April 18th. This is because of precession, a phenomenon where the Earth wobbles on its axis every 25,800 year cycle. Most people's signs that they believe they have are actually wrong. Mine, for instance, isn't actually Libra, it's Virgo. And the description still manages to fit. So does this mean that astrology is good for nothing? Well, of course not. It's good for entertainment. My concern is that a recent report by the NSF found almost half of Americans think astrology is a real science. America, does you know how to science? We still don't. The struggle continues. Thanks for joining me for D News, my fellow science geeks. We'll see you next time with more science updates.